What's up guys, Jubs here bringing you yet another Grounded video. In this video I will be going over all, that's right, all unreleased content that we have found for the game so far. This video is going to be in three sections just to make it slightly easier for you to navigate. These sections will be creatures, crafting and building. Now if you don't want to see any of the new stuff and you want it to remain a bit of a mystery then click off this video but if not then let's begin. So this is the water strider, as you can see at the minute they don't really move and kind of just sit there and don't really have any AI. They will drop water strider legs, uh, the legs will be used for an assortment of different crafting recipes. As you can see here they will be used to craft flippers, strider skates, the diving knife and the bone diving knife, harpoon gun and the harpoon bolts. I will go into more detail about all of these items later in the video. So up next we have the water boatman. This will be a new water creature in the game. As you can see currently it just swims up and down in a straight line and seems to be a passive creature. However bear in mind that all of the creatures that I show on this video today are subject to change in some way and probably will change in some way before the final release. The water boatman will drop its fins. These fins will be used to make a soup which is a new food item the player can craft and it will be used to make flippers allowing the player to swim faster underwater. Now we have the diving bell spider. That's right, soon you will no longer be safe from spiders by hopping into the nearest patch of water. These spiders are aggressive to the player and additionally seem to be aggressive to pretty much every underwater creature. The diving bell spider will drop diving bell silk which will be used to craft new items such as the koi scale helmet and bone diving knife. Now we have leeches. These bloodsuckers are aggressive towards the player. However as of the way they are now don't seem to have the ability to attack and usually just swim away ending combat. These are going to be useful for their leech sacks which will be used for the harpoon gun. Up next on our list are tadpoles. Now these little fellas seem to be passive towards the player and will just kind of swim around there. Now these guys may be cute but their meat and slime will be a valuable resource in crafting new items. These new items include decoy bait, the strider skates and the harpoon gun. Don't worry I will go into detail about all of these new craftables later in the video. And last but certainly not least of the underwater creatures that we have found so far in the game are koi fish. These are most definitely the biggest creatures so far and they are indeed aggressive to the player. However I have found that you need to get really close to them before they notice you. At the moment it doesn't seem like you can really damage them. Um, I did have to spawn them in additionally though so it makes sense for them not to be completely finished yet. These are going to be important though as you will need koi scales to craft a new armour in the game, the koi armour, which will be vital for underwater exploration. Stay tuned for a preview of that later on in the video. Now finally for some creatures outside of the water. First up we have the bee. At the moment bees seem to be passive towards the player. However I did notice that the ladybug here at one point was trying to attack a bee so it looks like there might be an insect rivalry there. Bees are going to be important as their fuzz and stingers will be used in a variety of different crafting such as the bee armour, not the rotted one which you can already find in the game but full on bee armour. Here we have the firefly. At the moment it's not in the game as an actual creature but it is in the form of a stuffed creature to decorate your base with. As you can see here it also provides light which I think is quite a unique way to provide some light to your base. Fireflies will drop iridescent scales and bioluminescent goop used to make the firefly headlamp, the stuffed firefly that you've just seen, the firefly lantern, the underwater lantern and the tactical harpoon gun. Now this creature is obviously not completed and just a placeholder at the time but I was able to find a spawn command for a wasp so expect to see some of them at some point in the future. Now for mosquitoes I can't actually show you it. It was at one point spawnable with a full model but it seems to no longer be available to spawn. I believe the reason for this is with the recent patch they fixed Burgle giving quests to hunt mosquitoes so I believe they have disabled them for the time being to prevent that. Their beak and blood sacks will be used to craft a new weapon, the mosquito needle and firefly lantern. Something else I have found but cannot find a model or anything else for is the water flea. There is just a reference to it in an item description. It looks as though it will be used to make a smoothie to be able to extend your breath underwater. The diving knife is pretty simple to craft. It just requires a pebblet, some woven fibre and a strider leg. 
it's going to allow you to attack underwater and gather flora such as lily pad membrane. Please bear in mind that any weapons and armour that I show you, the stats will probably change um, before the time they are fully released. Now the bone diving knife is essentially an upgrade of the diving knife requiring additionally a bone and some diving bell spider silk. As of the moment, the bone diving knife is exactly the same as the diving knife. The only difference is the appearance. The bone trident is crafted using bone, sprig and woven fibre. The bone trident is essentially a spear that you can use underwater. However, the stats that you see here don't seem to be the case as with testing on land and in water, the damage doesn't seem substantial and the speed is actually quite slow. As you can see here, it seems to do about the same damage as the diving knife, taking two hits to kill a diving bell spider. Now next up we have the ant boxing glove. This is made quite easily with ant parts and mite fuzz. Now this seems to be another melee weapon and it is similar to the spear in terms of damage and speed but has the added benefit of being able to stun. The berry skin fist wrap is essentially a, the tier 2 of the ant boxing glove. It has slightly more damage and substantially more stun potential. It is made with berry leather and bee fuzz. Now the stinger spear is one of my favourite additions with basically being a tier 2 spear. It is made with a bee stinger, bee fuzz and spider silk. It is essentially the same as a spear but puts out a fair bit more damage. The mosquito needle is a new tier 3 weapon that looks to be added to the game. However, it does look like it's quite unfinished. As you can see, it still doesn't really have a proper model, it just has a placeholder model. It seems to be in between kind of a spear and a mallet as in it does kind of similar damage and speed to a spear however it has some sort of stun potential so it's a kind of in between it is made with a mosquito beak mosquito blood sack and spider silk the dragonfly slayer looks to be the first tier 4 weapon added to the game it has maxed out damage and max stun potential with supposedly medium speed however it's definitely on the slower end of things it is made using a bee stinger and steel gum now steel gum is not something that we've seen yet. Judging by the description, it is likely to be a piece of chewing gum added to the map somewhere that you will be able to harvest and use to craft this absolute beast of a weapon. In just a second, I will show you how strong this weapon really is. finally looks like we will be getting a shield added to the game in the form of the weevil shield. Now at the moment it doesn't function properly and is just using the acorn shell model but it is exciting news to be able to get our hands on some shields finally. Next moving on to some more utility type items we have the firefly lantern which as it stands is basically just another torch but I'm pretty sure that will change in time as the description suggests it will be refillable. It is made with the bioluminescent goop and mosquito blood sacks. The underwater lantern will be another light source option available to the player. It has a slight green glow similar to that of the slime mould. As the name of the item suggests, it will be for underwater. Currently, torches are just fine underwater which doesn't really make sense to me. So my guess would be that when these are added, torches will no longer function underwater, making the player have to craft these to properly explore underwater. Here we have two items that don't really work yet, but can speculate as to what their function will be. We have the leaf spotting scope, which we can assume will act just like a telescope and allow the player to scope out the area, and the leaf blower. This one is a little more unclear as its only description is swinging it makes a small wind blow. Harpoon guns will be another water themed addition to the game, a ranged weapon that will work underwater. So far the damage seems pretty decent. Something that may change by the time it's released though. They are made with sprig, a leech sack, tadpole slime and a strider leg. The tactical harpoon gun so far acts exactly the same as the harpoon gun with the addition of having a light attached to it. 
Neither gun has proper animations yet though, but I would really like to see the inclusion of an aim in or aim down sight type of feature, which will really take advantage of the spotlight the tactical harpoon gun offers. The tactical harpoon is made with the original harpoon gun, plus a sprig, some woven fibre and bioluminescent goop, which will be dropped by fireflies. Now the decoy bait is another item being added in, it is made with eelgrass strand which is currently not in the game but it can be spawned in with commands and some tadpole meat. It currently doesn't really seem to work but admittedly I have not tested it on everything but as the description suggests it will be used to distract larger predators so this may be useful for when you're getting chased down by a wolf spider in the future. Next we have the ant confuser bomb, now this one's a little bit of a mystery as it's craftable but you can't do anything with it yet, you are unable to throw or activate it. The description suggests it knocks ants senseless, maybe like a potential stun but that seems a bit strange to me. Ants are not really a terribly difficult enemy to overcome as it, and it seems strange to have an item specific to taking out just ants. A cool implementation I would like to see with this considering ant pheromones are an ingredient would be using this bomb would make ants fight under your control for say a limited time. Imagine being attacked by a spider and you chuck out one of these bombs and suddenly your own little ant army is backing you up. I think that would be an amazing addition in my opinion. Next we have bee armour, now I know that rotten bee armour already exists in the game but this is an improvement over that, with each piece offering slightly more defence than the rotten version and also wearing all pieces offers a set bonus which decreases fall damage. Up next we have the rebreather, yet another water based addition. This handy item will increase the player's breath, so you will find it much easier to stay and explore underwater. It is made using lily pad wax, sprigs and plant fibre. Here you can see just how much it slows down your oxygen usage underwater. This is with... And this is without the rebreather. Now, the diving mask is essentially the upgrade of the rebreather, requiring the rebreather as an ingredient, as well as some eelgrass strands and some cattail fluff. Right now it shows max defence, and I have tested that while wearing this, even wolf spiders can't even scratch me, but I assure you this will not be the case on release. It also slightly improves upon the breath effect of the rebreather, as I will just show you in a second. Flippers are the next addition, greatly improving your swim speed as I will demonstrate in just a moment. It is crafted using a water boatman fin, eelgrass strands, lily pad wax and a strider leg. Next we have strider skates. Now these sound pretty cool giving you the ability to skate across the surface of the water. However in its current state they are functionally useless. Now onto Koi Armour. Now this essentially takes all the previous water enhancing abilities and puts them all together, greatly increasing your swimming speed and your breath capacity. The helmet is crafted using Koi Scales, the Diving Mask, Eelgrass Strands, Lily Pad Wax and Diving Bell Spider Silk. And as you can see, the chest plate is crafted using Koi Scales, Cattail Fluff, Eelgrass Strands, Lily Pad Wax and Bone. Finally, the Greaves are crafted using Koi scales, cattail fluff, eelgrass strands, lily pad wax, and the flippers. With some testing, I couldn't see a difference between the swim speed using the flippers and the koi armour. I did, however, notice the koi helmet seemed to give slightly more breath capacity than the diving mask. The firefly headlamp is the final craftable item on my list, crafted with iridescent scales and bioluminescent goop, both obtained from, you guessed it, fireflies. It provides a smidgen of defence, but provides light wherever you would go. Now we move on to buildable objects, and starting off very basic is the triangle stem wall. Now I have no idea why this wasn't, or in fact isn't in the game to begin with, as it is literally just a triangle version of the stem wall. Moving on. Now, for some decoration, it looks like we will be getting two rugs, the mite rug and the bee rug. Both are made with dry grass chunks and either mite or bee fuzz. This is what they look like. 
Now I'm personally not the biggest fan of them, I think they may be a little bit too big and I don't really like the way that you see the individual kind of strands, but I'm sure a lot of you will appreciate this added to the game. Moving on to some of the new stuffed creatures. As you can see, they don't really have proper crafting recipes yet with them with the crafting requirements requiring themselves, but here's a quick look at them all. Up next we have the not so functional grinder. This also doesn't have a proper crafting recipe and doesn't actually function yet. However, judging by its description and the way it looks, I assume it to work similar probably to the smoothie maker in which you have to put a couple of items in and get something else out of it. I could be completely wrong with this though, so take that as you will. Now we have some more exciting building options, at least in my opinion. We have new traps. First up we have the catapult, and as you can imagine, catapults things. This is made with a grass plank, rubber, a weed stem and a leaf. The leaf will be a new building material just like the grass planks and weed stems which I will demonstrate for you guys in just a second. As you can see the catapult is wound back and then stepping on it will send you up into the air, albeit not actually by that much and I know what you're thinking and the answer is yes, it can be used on insects too. Next up in traps we have the ice trap made with a canteen. As you can see here, it creates a surface that speeds you up as you walk across it. And in my opinion, doesn't really act like ice as it's not actually all too slidey. It just kind of speeds you up and anything else that walks across it. Now we have the honey trap made with, well, honey. Now this works exact opposite as the ice traps, slowing you or anything that walks across it down. Next up, we have a turret made with dry grass and rubber. As you can see, it looks just like a chair at the minute that you are able to enter but doesn't have any a function other than that. So we'll have to wait and see for exactly how this is actually going to work. Next up on the list is one that I'm excited for and that is the plasma orb. It currently doesn't have a crafting recipe and honestly looks a little out of place from what you can normally build in the game. So maybe it's a bit further off. Now originally I didn't actually think it worked at all but it does seem like it does actually in fact damage insects who get too close to it but they do have to get right up to the metal centre and not just in the kind of field around it, as I will show you here. And last on my list is the Peblet Dumper. Now this one actually requires a wall for it to be built onto. It is made using spider silk and a grass plank. As you can see, you load it up with Peblets, 10 to be exact, and then you can drop them all. At the moment, it doesn't seem all useful. I would like to see some kind of tripwire added maybe, so you could automatically drop them onto an insect that walks by. Well, that's everything I have to show you. Thank you for everyone who's made it to the end. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe. I will be putting out more content just like this on a weekly basis, if not sooner. Stay tuned for the next one.